an application in Angular is a set of custom components glued together in HTML via inputs and outputs. So far, we've only built applications with a single component. Our goal now is to start building applications that are composed of multiple components working together. Breaking up an application into multiple logical components makes it easier to architect an application as it grows in complexity and reuse common components in multiple places. The goal of this lecture is to break up our small application into three components and start gluing them together. By the end of this lecture, you're going to learn how to create and configure multiple components in one application. And you're going to learn how to enable input property binding on a custom component. So components can start communicating with each other. So if you think of a typical web page, we can normally break it down into a set of logical components, each with its own view. For example, in our plunker, we have a header component here with the main buttons. We have, well, two sidebar components, one on the left, one on the right. We have a main editor component and we have a preview pane component. So we're going to break up our application into a root app component this component won't have any functionality and will just contain other components. This component will also hold our joke list component and our joke list component will hold a list of joke components. Most Angular applications will have a root component called app root or app component. This typically just acts as a container to hold other components. Our components will therefore nest something like the below image. Just a quick note, for our convenience of learning, we are going to keep everything in one file. But when building Angular applications, the recommended approach is to have one component per file. So let's create our joke component. This is going to show an individual joke. We still have our old joke component in this file. Now we still wanna use the card style, so we'll copy that from the joke list component. Let me stop the app from running. And then I'm just gonna paste it in my joke component. Now we're not gonna loop over the elements. Now we also can just remove the ng4 since this component will now only render a single joke. At the same time, the joke component doesn't have a separate setup and punchline, we just have one joke property, and that's gonna hold an instance of a joke, and we actually also don't need the constructor anymore. So now our joke component renders a single individual joke. Moving on to our joke list component. So we've broken out a joke into its own joke component. So now we change the joke list components template to contain multiple joke components instead. So if you remember, the joke component has a tag of joke. And we want to loop over our jokes array and instantiate multiple joke components. Now, just to keep things clear, I'm going to say let J of jokes. Now delete this. So for every entry in our jokes array, I'm going to create a joke component. So our final component is our new top level app component. This just holds an instance of the joke list component. So we give our app component a selector of app and in the template, we're just holding one instance of the joke list component. So in order to use our new components, we need to add them into the declarations on our ng module. So we've already got joke component, we've already got joke list component. The next one I need to add is our new app component. And since we've changed what our new root component is going to be, we need to set that in the bootstrap property as well. So we've set that now to be the new app component. So our app component is our new root component. And then finally, in our index.html file, let's add the app component. 
in as a tag. So just a quick note, in Angular 2, we need to be explicit regarding what components and directives we are going to use in our Angular module by either adding them into the imports or declarations property. In Angular 1, each directive when added via a script tag was globally available, which made it convenient for smaller projects, but a problem for larger ones. Issues like name clashes came up often as different third party libraries often use the same names. But with Angular 2, two third party libraries can actually export the same name for components. They could actually, two separate third party libraries could have their own joke component named exactly the same. But only the version that we include and use in our ng module will be the actual component that gets used by our application. And just a quick tip, the built-in directives we are using, such as ng4, are all defined in a module called common module, and that module is again included in the browser module. So just by including the browser module in our imports, that's how we're getting the code for the ng4 directive. And that's how come we're being allowed to use that directive in our HTML. So if we ran this application now, we are just seeing some empty boxes, and if we inspected the console, we'd see some errors. Scrolling to the top of the errors, we'd see this error saying on the class joke component, cannot read property setup of undefined. So the above should give you a, a bit of a clue really. Well, one is saying it's on the joke component. Number two, it's saying in the, it's got the word template is there. So you know it's something to do with the template. And third, it's saying cannot read property setup of undefined. So you know it's something to do with the setup property. So now if we look at the offending part of our joke component template, if I scroll up, if you look at the setup part, this is what's failing. So if you remember, the error is cannot read property setup of undefined. So in the context of joke.setup, that means joke is undefined. It's blank. We do have a property on our joke component class called joke, and we are looping and creating joke components in our joke list component like so. But nowhere are we setting the value of the joke property on our joke component. All we're doing is we're creating multiple joke components, each one with a blank joke property. Ideally, we want to write something like this. So in just the same way as we bound in a previous lecture, as we bound to the hidden property of the p tag, in this element, we want to bind to the joke property of a joke component. Even though our joke component has a joke property, we can't bind to it using the square bracket syntax. We need to explicitly mark it as an input property on our joke component. And we do this by prepending the joke property in the component with a new annotation called at input, like so. In order to use input, we need to import it. And it actually comes from Angular Core. So I'm going to add it to the list of our imports from Angular Core. So I'm going to add it there. This annotation, this decorator, tells Angular that the joke property is an input property. And therefore, in HTML, we can bind to it using the square bracket input property binding syntax. So this import now becomes part of the public interface of our component. So now if we run our application, everything should be working. There we go. Now this input now has become part of the public interface of our component, this joke property binding. Let's say at some future point, we decide to change the joke property of our joke component to perhaps just data for whatever reason. But because this input is now part of the public interface for our component, we would also need to change all the input property bindings everywhere our component is used. So just because we decided to change the property to data here, we would now need to go to the joke list component and say, well, actually that's now called data. 
that's not a great thing to ask the consumers of your component to have to do, especially if your component that you're creating is used by a lot of people, or perhaps it's a third party open source component. But we don't really want to be stuck having to call our properties the same name just because, well, that's the name we thought of at the start. So to avoid expensive refactors, the input annotation takes a parameter, which is the name of the input property to the outside world. So if we changed our component, if we changed our input property and passed in a first parameter of joke to the outside world, the name of the input property is still joke, but to the joke component, it's going to store it on the data property. So if we go back to our joke list, we can just keep our code exactly the same and still keep it as joke. Now again, to be able to use data in our joke component, we need to replace everywhere we've used joke to use data instead here. And now if I run the application again, you can see it's working just like before. So in summary, an Angular application should be broken down into small logical components, which are all glued together in HTML. It's normal to have one root component called app component, which acts as the root node of in the component tree. We also need to explicitly declare all of our components in the application's root ng module, and we can make properties on our custom components input bindable with the square bracket syntax by prepending them with the input annotation. In the next lecture, we're going to look at how to emit custom output events from our custom components.